There's a hymn for every child living everywhere around the world. For each of you whose voice will someday soon be heard. This is a hymn to give you faith to heal mankind. To bring a love so bright its light won't be denied. This is a hymn. Acts of love, our voices will be heard. So let your love fall on all mankind, and may this hymn give you courage to shine. This is a hymn for every light worker around the world. For every one of you whose voice has not been heard. This is a hymn to give you faith to rise above all the things we wish mankind had not become. This is a hymn. Is a hymn to remind you to love. This is a hymn to remind you to love. Good evening, light workers, and welcome to the show. And I'm Christina, your host for this evening. My co-host Anita is off for the evening. She's actually at Sundance Festival drumming and singing. Uh, she wanted to be with us this evening, but um, we know she's with us here in spirit. Tonight's show is very exciting for me. We have a very special guest. I actually have butterflies in my stomach right now. Our special guest is Almin. And Almin is an internationally known spiritual teacher. She's a healer, the author of many wonderful books such as Gift of the Unicorn, Secret of the Hidden Realm, Opening the Doors to Heaven, The Mysteries of Isis, and many, many more other books. Almina is recognized as one of our greatest mystics of our time. She's a Tolstak Nagual. Almina has dedicated her life to assisting humanity. She, te- she shares tools and insights on our journey of ascension, and she lives and teaches from God consciousness. Tonight, she'll be answering many of our listeners' questions, and maybe she'll share some recent insights or miracles with us. So I would like to welcome to Lightworker Radio, Almin. Hello, Almin. Hello, Christina. Thank you for having me on. It's such a pleasure to be with you. Thank you. I'm so delighted. I'm very honored for you to be here. It's been quite a long time. Yes, it has. And I'm very happy that you're here. Um, Almin, we've got quite a few listeners that sent us in a lot of questions, um, and I was hoping that maybe you'd be able to answer some of them for us this evening. Yes, of course, Christina. We can we can certainly tackle them. <laughs> okay. Um, I have some of my own questions as well, but uh, some of your students and some of the listeners um, have sent in some. Maybe we could just start off at the beginning. And I mean, this is a pretty wide um, subject, but maybe you could tell us at this time where are we exactly in our, our ascension process on the Earth. Well, the Earth started in earnest to ascend in February in 2005, at the very beginning of that month. And the Earth started to rise very rapidly between membranes, um, well, through membranes that are between the realms, and it started moving up. And as we moved up, Christina, time started to change. In fact, our calendars are woefully wrong at this point, Um, but... Uh, it's been going ever since, and the Earth has become a very much of a pivot point for cosmic ascension. Wonderful. Um, the calendar, it seems that the calendar is, is incorrect. What time point would you put us in right now? Because many people are, you know, still talking about 2012, 
preparing for it and, you know, saying that it hasn't really yet come, but I, I myself know that we were already past that time. Where would you put us right now on the calendar? Very far beyond it, because we passed 2012 um, in about the, the beginning of the second week of October 2005. Um, I myself had given the prophecies exactly the way I saw it. Not a very popular stance at the time, because people said I was um, you know, a fear monger and this and that, but I called it exactly the well, way I saw it. And then I made myself very much wrong. Um, by uncovering as I started to work um, with the Infinite Mother on this issue of doing things in the physical that needed to be done for this ascension with uh, the way showers of the earth, I made myself completely wrong. The war that I had predicted for 2011 was averted narrowly, of course, because everything is always in divine time and it always looks like it's the nick of time, you know. But um, right. narrowly in August, uh, we went through 2011 of, 20, of 2005 is when that happened. 2005, we went into 2011. So currently yes, we are aware. Well, we actually went into 2012 in October of 2005. So to tell oh, you the okay. honest truth, I am completely unsure where we were because the higher up we went, the more we sped up. And then linear time, which you know, I'm happy to explain if you wish, but linear time Ooh. collapsed altogether. Right. So with, with no linear time, how does one even give a date? That's exactly what I've been thinking, like, where will we be going? Like, how will we um, time ourselves? Do we go on a 24-hour clock? Do we go month to month, year to year? From, from here on, how do we determine time or where we are? Well, the two most accurate clocks that I have come across, one I've put in um, the book Secrets of the Hidden Realms, but it is the Atlantean clock, and it uses right. the inner Earth's pulsation to measure time, and it's actually accurate to within five minutes. But more accurately than that, specifically for those of us, of course, who live on the surface of the Earth, um, there is a clock that came out of the translations of the Mysteries of Isis, and I was contacted by a group of beings that called themselves the Jean Galabruc, and they gave me their writings, which... Um, we actually have some of their writings in some of the old libraries in Europe that the alchemists had, but they gave a clock based on frequency and pulsations of the Earth's rotation. And um, it's in the book, you know, uh, uh, what is the ISIS one? Um, you know my book. <laughs> yes. <laughs> That's the one. <laughs> Okay. Oh my gosh, you know, but I know it. <laughs> you know, I I recently had somebody on a talk show ask me what my book's title meant, Aruba Firina, which is the book uh, that the, we have the photographs in of the fairies and colors. I know. And so on. Yeah. Well, I didn't know. <laughs> That's just the name they gave me, and so I went and find out, and and it means um, the gift of love, but I didn't have a clue what my own book title meant. So that shows you. Well, that was one of my questions, Elmine, so thank you. You've already answered it. <laughs> Good. Gift of love. That's yes. very appropriate. I mean, are you aware today? I, I received some emails just the last week, and it's funny. The very first time I received it was just after I watched one of the videos, um, The Way of the Goddess, and uh -huh. you spoke about um, the third, uh, I guess, cycle that we're in now, which is uh, growth through grace. Yes. And Two days later, I received emails, and now I've just received a whole bunch yesterday, that today being um, a full moon, that the energy that, especially in southern India, that the sages and the mystics, they're all celebrating, and they're calling it grace light. So there are, there's so many people around right now doing not just meditation for the full moon, but they're calling it grace light. How are, are, beautiful. Are you, I know. I, mean, I didn't just, have a uh, clue. I, I live like a hermit, Christina, and I, do, I, I don't know those things, so I had not a clue. But yes, we, we officially entered the age of growth through grace within the last few days. Wow, so it's just totally all pink. It's, uh, it's beautiful. I think you can feel it right now. I have a goosebump. So I, that's another reason I'm delighted that you're here today, because it's just a powerful time right now. So thank yes. you. 
Um, okay, I'm going to get through all my questions here. There's My second question is, I believe it was on last week's show. You have a new radio talk show, uh, Sedona Talk Radio. Yes. And, yes, and I think it was last week's show, I'm pretty sure, because that was the second one you did last Saturday. Correct. And in in the video, you talk about that death um, ceases to exist, correct? Yes. Like death, death ceases to exist. So if we choose it, of course, it will happen. But my question is, as we become, and it's probably a silly question, but maybe not as I look around and the people in my life, as we become more light, will we will we actually cease to age physically? And maybe the people that are you know currently elderly and choose to stay here, will they sort of I don't know? Will they reverse? They can, the yes, age they can use person? them. No, they can definitely use them. Um, I've I've seen the most extraordinary examples in my own classes. There just is this agelessness about those who go into the silence of the mind, because it's okay. the dialogue of the mind that takes so much energy and causes the resistance to life. It actually arises as a result of resistance to life. But with the silence of the mind, there is very little energy used in daily life. And so, yes, they start definitely to use them because, as you know, the cells renew themselves sort of every seven years. Okay, I understand. Okay. That's a wonderful thing. It it really is. And, you know, if... um, I, we can perhaps refer the folks to that um, little video clip or show or something, but the, if, I, if I can just briefly explain that death used to be the movement of awareness against the bodies that are more subtle bodies. And in August of 2006, a massive occurrence in the cosmos reversed the poles of the cosmos and shattered the multiple little spirals of moving awareness which meant that technically there is nothing moving against our collective bodies, if you will, to cause wear and tear on it. The tumbling force of death um, Mm -hmm. is no more. Wow. That's wonderful. It's a beautiful thing to think about, too, because I look at some family members who have been, they're still here, which I'm actually surprised because they've gone through such, a lot of, I don't want to say suffering, but, you know, they have a lot of different ailments, and, and um, but they're still here. I mean, both my parents left uh, past last year, and, yes, I see some of my family who have gone through so much more and they're still here, and I, I, part of me feels like they're going to stay, and, and to know that they can reverse that, you yes. know, um, is um, very heartwarming, it's very beautiful. And, of course, we, we leave a little bit at a time if we resist life because it leaks life force. Uh-huh. You know, and, and with it is attached soul force that leads because soul force requires life force. But um, it truly is a choice. Wonderful. Okay, we have another question here from um, actually someone who is sort of a new student uh, who's come to know you. And he's been watching all of the, the Way of the Goddess videos. Well, he's been watching all of them. And he wrote me and has a question for you. And he's asking, actually, based on those videos, if you if you can actually elaborate on growth through support and growth through grace, and and you know, and the purpose of life at this moment, and how that all relates. Um. Yes, I will do my best. Um. First of all, just to update those who aren't familiar with this, we, we we're growing through opposition up until August of 2006. And the opposition was, you know, the fact that we were literally having to to withstand this pummeling force of moving spirals of awareness is just indicative of the fact that our growth came through opposition. When those poles reversed, what happened is that all of a sudden, opposite energy and matter used to attract. Suddenly, they repelled. And we started to attract same matter and same energy. So at the most basic level, there's many, many levels we can discuss this at, but at the most basic level, the growth through support came because we suddenly were pulling in not opposite people that were, you know, false behind their smiles into our life, but people who approach life from the same level of integrity that we did. And that made us pull in support in our life. Growth through support also meant that because we now had mirrors not of what we were not 
in our life, but of what we are, we could study ourselves in the mirrors of others with, with ease because it no longer was opposite. And it's in the opposite that it is so painful, but with joy. And we could see beautiful things in them, and we, we would recognize it because it's in us, and then it would enhance us even more to become more of what we are. In other words, we grew through the inspiration and support of others of similar matter and energy. But growth through grace is a very interesting thing. And I just recently on, on blog, log or whatever it is, they can find it on my website. Again, I'm very sort of obtuse about my own products, but um, they can you find it. A little diary, you mean? That's it, yes. <laughs> you know it better than I do. <laughs> I read it all, and it's, I wanted to talk about that afterwards, because I think it's wonderful. <laughs> well, every day's happenings, I write down that day, and it goes on our my spiritual diary uh, for folks to be able to share the journey. And if you look at that, something that recently happened and then it was fine-tuned a little bit more is that, see, because we're ascending, it is a given that if you take what on our incorrect calendar is, say, two years from now or 18 months from now, that we would be in a very much higher level. So life would be better. Each one of us would have a better um, perception and awareness and consciousness. So what has happened is that the, the minutes are separated, if you will, by these membranes. They're no longer linear, but they're like a, sli- a sliced bread that's stacked and is sitting on its end. All minutes exist simultaneously, but each slice is really separate. And so... The membrane between those slices are allowing our own guidance and assistance from the future to pour to us today. And likewise, you know, our wisdom from today pours backwards. That again changes today and, and, and makes it better because if you change the past, you're changing today. But um, it only flows from future backwards, not from, from backwards forwards. And so... Um, we can be our own guides. We can, before we go to sleep, because it happens during sleep only, but during sleep, those membranes between moments are open to receive guidance from our future. And it's our future selves. And this is an instance of where the future already knows, so we know. And if we look at what grace is, I had um, one of my um, beautiful brothers from Amsterdam write to me on this. What, I mean, what exactly is grace? And um, grace, you can think of grace as being given to you and you don't even have to, to do anything. So this is, this is the gift and the award we have won for fighting the good fight through the ages of illusion and darkness we've had. Many beings have been removed out of the cosmos who didn't earn the right to live. And at this point, those of us that are here and have spirits in our bodies, which I might add, have earned the right to live. And this is our reward, that growth is coming effortlessly. We don't have to work um, on it. We just have to be in great joy and pleasure. Well, thank you. (laughs) That's wonderful news. It is, isn't it? That is very exciting. Oh, it's very exciting, and I'm certainly ready for that. <laughs> yes. Thank you, Almi. Um, okay. There's another video. Oh, you have a lot of videos. I just want to let our listeners know, too, that Almi has quite a few videos um, on YouTube, on Google Video, or Daily Motion, and you can actually access all of these through her website at www.spiritualjourneys. N-E-Y-S dot com. But one of the videos, I mean, I think it was, and I don't remember them all, but I do remember this one. I think it was on the um, Anunnaki and the Dark Gods show. Yes. In, in that one. Now, this comes actually from Anita, my co-host. It's based a bit, a bit on experience that she's had this uh, past winter. In the video, you mentioned that Nibiru, did I say that correctly, and Antares no yes. longer, I believe you said Antares, no longer exist. Correct? Correct. Okay. Um, now, it's kind of a two-part here. Uh, for me, there's still many, many people talking about it and creating groups, and there's still people saying that they are part of the Nerubian Council um, or 
channeling the information from Antares. So that that would be the one question I would like to ask you. You know, is this false information that's still being put through, or just people sort of um, maybe not discerning or, or really being in tune with what information is coming through? That would be part one of the of the question. Okay, and if I may preface it with this, you know, I literally make large parts of my own books wrong by the time they go to press. And some of those books, the information pours through my hand so rapidly that, and I write it all by longhand, but, and that, and also the, the members of my classes are turning into oracles. And this started to really accelerate since last October. And so what is happening is that um, the information is, is flooding us. And we've been producing, this year so far, we've produced three books. I mean, it's, uh, it's just incredible. In six months, three books. And Whoa. it's myself with the assistance of my very beautiful students that are just day and night being flooded with revelations and, and um, visions that all correspond because I cross-reference them to, if I put them in the books. So the point is that I make myself wrong in terms of that I day by day by day reveal the cutting edge of what is happening out throughout space, on earth, in hidden realms, up into the highest levels, because I am able to get it directly from the Infinite Mother, whom I've been working for in this physical density since February of 2005. And I started to work with Father in August of 2007. So it's not a popular stance for me because it shakes up all these belief systems that make people think they know. But most, you know, most books that are out there, most information that's being given, it's it's so obsolete. My own yes, stuff is obsolete from day to day, you know. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And so, so it's not a, a very comfortable place to be, but it is the impeccable place to be, which is just simply to speak my highest truth. Until I found Father in Heaven, who had been holding space for us during the Ascension in August of 2007, you know, I had to say to people, I'm sorry, I can't find a God that isn't an imposter. That was not popular. And so, you know, it has only recently been that the infinite eliminated because of some very pertinent points, very pertinent. Um, the, uh, some planets out of the Antares system as well as the planet Nibiru. And if people are still talking about it, they are obsolete in their information. Is their information uh, necessarily accurate if they channel? Well, it could be. Because oftentimes we are answering ourselves, but we associate that higher voice of ourselves with a specific spiritual experience when six years ago somebody spoke spoke to us from Nibiru or from, you know, from some realm that doesn't even exist anymore. And so we may still be getting accurate information, calling that part that is answering us a a Nibiruan council or whatever it is, Um, but the information may still be correct. Okay, thank you. Now, the second part to that would be is actually Anita, my co-host, her own personal experience that she's been having or she had last winter relating to Antares. Now, she feels that she was on that planet and she feels, um, you know, she, I think you, you said that it exploded and so that no longer exists, but she felt that she was either there or just taken away from it at that time and that it, she's gone through such... Um, uh, remembrance of that just this last year and I'm wondering if maybe that might be a lot of people who were there at that time and that's what actually is sort of maybe maybe bringing the information through there just as more as a remembrance. My sister, that's very, very possible. And I myself was in the Antares system and, um, you know, we if we take a look at the gift of the unicorns, the second half of it has to deal well, with the history of the cycles. And the history of the cycles says clearly that Isis went to Antares and mar- married the king there, whose name was Oksanu Huratep. And um, he, he governed 80% of Antares the last time I saw him, because he no longer exists, was actually in 2005, towards October. But, um, you know, I also have been there, and I know, I've, I don't believe that I have, in this 
um, Lifetime met your co-host, but I know her. And when I, you know, when I hear her name, there is such a remembrance. And I, that's one place we've been together. Well, I mean, uh, she, she sent me an email before. She, she's at Sundance right now. She's a drummer and singer, and so uh, at Native, and she's just, um, she's in her joy. But she sent me a note this morning. She says, you know, can you please tell me about my experience that I had? Because she's only come to know you in this lifetime, lifetime through me probably about four months ago. But uh, she had an experience with Divine Mother and you. And I said, I'm sorry, I need, I don't remember the story, but please, when you know, it, hopefully she'll send a your next upcoming workshop here in Toronto, and she'll be able to tell you about it. But it was so moving and profound for her, and she'll be so excited to hear what she just said, that she knows how connected that she is with you and Divine Mother. And see, my sister, we've been serving the Divine Mother for so many eons of existence, and Isis was sent by Mother to Earth. She wasn't born. She was not part of the Anunnaki, but she came in, had their memories changed so that she could come into the ruling family and make the biggest difference. Um, oh. and, and the libraries of Isis, which I've had been in and had the privilege of translating one set of plates and a small bit of another set of plates, and that has become opening the doors of heaven, which is the revelations of Isis. Um, but I've given the, the glyphs, I've given what they sound like, and I've given the English. Um, but it, it was her sacred duty to establish this core, which is the, um, the core of the heart of the sacred libraries that have been opening, and to reawaken people's memory to the fact that there isn't just a father, there's also a mother in heaven. Uh -huh. Right. Beautiful. As you mentioned, um, opening the doors of heaven, uh, Mysteries of Isis, I just want to let our listeners know that you can also, um, on our Lightworker blog, uh, or on the profile, under today's segment, you can actually you'll see a picture of the book of Opening the Doors of Heaven, and if you click on it, it's a direct link to Amazon where you can purchase the book and see um, all of Al Means material. So I just want to mention that that is right there. There's a direct link to it. Thank you. I mean, would you like to? Oh, you're welcome. Would you like to take a little break right now, I mean? Yes, I'd be happy to. Okay, we'll be back in just a couple of minutes then. Thank you. A globally recognized mystic, seer, healer, and teacher of God consciousness. Her students, masters, discover their personal power by shedding layers of social conditioning while attaining the power of forgiveness, silence, and self-reliance. Explore with Almin as you're told to guide the mysteries of the cosmos through her series of CDs, books, online magazine, seminars, and workshops. Discover your own personal path to manifestation, ascendancy, and enlightenment by visiting Elmine on the web at www.spiritualjourneys.com. That's www.spiritual, S-P-I-R-I-T-U-A-L, journeys, J-O-U-R-N-E-Y-S.com. Reclaim your right to live a life of mystery and magic. And log on to www.spiritualjourneys.com. The world of mysticism is yet another reason to rejoice. Almin has authored another manuscript of profound knowledge. It's entitled, Opening the Doors of Heaven, Revelations of the Mysteries of Isis. Through a time travel tunnel linking Ireland and Egypt, Isis has sent a small group of masters to prepare for the day when the mysteries would once again be released to the world to restore balance and enhance life. They established the Order of the White Rose to guard the sacred objects and the secrets of Isis. In an unprecedented event, heralding the advent of a time of light, these mysteries are released for the very first time. Packed with truly thought-provoking information, this book is bound to have an indelible impression on not only the reader, but on global New Age philosophy. To reserve your copy of this groundbreaking work, go to www.spiritualjourneys.com or call 
502-499-0016. Welcome back to Lightworker Radio. So if you've just joined us this evening, we are talking with El Mee, an international spiritual teach- teacher, healer, author, and mystic. El Mee, um, I have a very, it's a very common question, I suppose, um, and, but someone wrote in, and uh, they were asking, you know, with so much light coming into the planet right now, uh, why are we still seeing a war um, such as Iraq or in Afghanistan and in different places? Why are we still seeing the war? Why does it appear that nothing has changed? That's a, such a good question, Christina. Firstly, if we can understand that the physical particles from which life is made, they're the most difficult to change. The, the most etheric of all the building blocks of life, which I've called presence particles, are actually the particles that hold the template. So, so at the highest level, the ideal is held. Then from the lowest level up, it has to ripple through life that finally it grows and meets the ideal. Um, so the, the densest levels are going to change the slowest. That's, that's reason number one. Reason number two is an interesting thing. Um, there always is a gap between the ideal and the actual level because if the actual level of life meets that gap, then it immediately changes to the next level and goes to a new pattern. In other words, at this very high level, the little tiny bits hold a beautiful pattern in place. As the frequency of life catches up to it, the smaller the gap becomes, in one instant it changes to a yet a higher pattern. Now there's a big gap again. So we are always playing a game of catch-up with the ideal. So the only thing light workers can do is to just keep working on closing the gap because one of these days that gap is going to be closed and another pattern is going to come in place as it does multiple times, but this time the pattern is going to rewrite life as we know it in the physical. Much has already been prevented, enormous cataclysms. Yeah. Um, you know, and we, we need to measure what has happened not by what we don't see, but by what we don't see. In other words, don't, don't look for what hasn't manifested, but look for what's been prevented. So then there's a, third, there's a third little bit to this, and that is that man is the microcosm. They, it's, he is the most unique being in that everything in the macrocosm is contained in that microcosm. So we have been given creator abilities more than virtually any other being. Now, other beings are actively wielding white magic, which is incorruptible um, power to expose perfection in, in reality. However, ours is restored to a large extent, but it's still in the infantile stages, and I've been writing about this in the books. But we truly have incredible abilities to keep a picture in place that we think should be there. So, in other words, if the major light workers on earth keep within themselves warring factions, for instance, let's say their inner child yearns to play, to relax, to have fun and laughter. Let's say the adult squishes it down because this is a tough life, I'm going to earn my living. There's a war inside our inner family. Um, if we override intuition, if we don't take time for, to, to access the non-cognitive, subtle informations of our day, the left brain and right brain are at war. Peace without will not come until there is that integrated peace within. And the, the more light we have, the more capability we have to wield this power. Wonderful. Thank you. You know, another little you... thing, I'm so sorry to interrupt, but you know, Christina, what okay. just dawns on me as well is, you know, the other thing is that people have been watching, the, they've been paying attention to these war games. 
And perhaps it is that it makes them feel safe at last, but the interesting fact of it is that when mother and father issued, uh, uh, ushered in this realm of peace that we just went in days ago, the two missing frequencies in the cosmos that had to be replaced before they could do that was a feeling of being safe, finding our cosmic home a safe home, and secondly, to look at life as a joyous adventure. Those were the two frequencies that were missing. And your people look at war and then they say, thank goodness, I can sleep safely in my bed and now I feel safe. Um, it could be that, that putting in this new frequency will make people less interested in giving their focus there because we empower what we focus on. We wouldn't have the fear anymore um, um, and, and to create war. Like maybe it would just wouldn't exist, would it not? Yes, you're right, you're right. It just wouldn't be in our reality. I don't think so. It wouldn't be in our consciousness. No, our focus would be on the adventure. Mm hmm Great. Good news. <laughs> Thank you, Amin. Yes. Yeah. Okay, the next um, question is in reference to um, healing modalities. And part of this is my question. Uh, first, I would like to tell you that... Um, I had an experience, a very short, I had a mini session with Sandra here at the Toronto Health Show last year for a uh, Teresi Bell Vaspata. Yes. And I, ha I had not had that before. I didn't even know about it. So um, it was it was such a profound experience for me in that short time. And um, it's, thank you very much, and Divine Mother, for bringing you through that, the, the, that energy. Um, it's beautiful. It's, I don't even know how to express it because I just felt in the core of my being. All my cells were tingling. But what I've noticed as of late is that there's a lot more <clears throat> healing modalities popping up. And I remember once um, you said, I think it was sometime last year at one seminar, that Reiki, now I, I am an assumed Reiki master, but you're saying that Reiki has become obsolete. And for me, that resonates and I, I understand that. But there are so many. Um, since last year, modalities popping up. I mean, especially in Reiki, there's Jordanian, there's uh, Egyptian, there's Sufi, there's all these different uh, healing modalities. And and personally for myself, they don't really resonate. Um, so I'm just wondering whether or not these are actual energies that are being sent to the planet or not. Well, my sister, I... I would really hesitate to single out any specific modality myself, but basically mm -hmm. the bottom line of it is like this. Um, in August of 2006, as we've said, opposite energies no longer attracted. Any modality based on, on healing with energy, whether the energy comes from symbols or sigils or anything else, but any energy-related healing would, would now no longer be attracted by diseased energy. Previously, they worked wonderfully, and suddenly they did not. And I was actually in Dublin, and during the night, I was in my bed in, in the hotel at the airport, and one minute I was there, and the next minute I stood in this huge forest, and I felt the, sh the trees shake themselves, and this chorus went up through the forest, and the trees turned their trunks 180 degrees. And I said, what in the world is going on? And they said the poles of the cosmos just reversed. And after that, Mother sent me to, to make absolutely sure she, want, she severed the, um, the healing sources, energy sources, so that well-meaning energy healers will not make people ill. Because if you can define sickness, it is the repulsion of the healing energies that flows through everything. So if they send healing energies and all of a sudden, yesterday it was wonderfully effective and attracted to the diseased energies and now it is repelled, they wouldn't know that. And so right. the, the energy sources for those um, modalities were severed and people sometimes ask me, but then why is it still working that well for me? Well, the only way the only way energy healing could still be working well is if you have such faith in it because faith isn't energy related, it is light related. And light and frequency modalities prior to August of 2006 did not work well. 
And now they work wonderfully because opposite energies now repel, but opposite light and frequency now attract. And so what happened in that night is Mother cut those energy sources. I had to go to my class the next day and tell them, oh, my stars, most of you are earning your living, being Reiki monsters and so on. And I'm terribly sorry to tell you, but in the night the energy source was cut. Well, I tried to avoid it about 10 to 5 in the afternoon. And, <laughs> and and so 10 to 5, you know, finally one of the Reiki masters asked me in point blank, and I had to answer her. And suddenly a group of butterflies threw right, they flew right through the panes of the glass in the room, and they flew across oh. her shoulder and into my into my forehead. And I started immediately to write sigils on the board, and this language was pouring through me, which is one of Mother's languages. And, you know, because class was ending, I went straight to the hotel room and wrote everything down until 7 a.m. the next morning. And um, there is, you know, I've never charged to give this to anyone, but it is absolutely something that can be lucratively used by healers because it is set up in a way that whatever... You, you are healing. It affects major grids across the cosmos depending on the level that you're healing from. Uh, so you always leave the cosmos in your debt, and so you can charge what you want to. You still leave it in your debt. And there are ways to self-initiate into that. Um, the Ring of Truth is the book that deals with this polar reversal and how life has totally changed that major light workers should know about. And it gives self-initiations. And so does the Opening the Doors of Heaven book. Wonderful. Thank you, Ami. Actually, that leads me to sort of another uh, question um, that you, uh, regarding charging. Um, a lot of light workers, there's a lot of, I suppose, debate, or as they bickering, really, going on about whether or not um, you, know, you should charge for your service or for your healing. Um, I was wondering if you could talk a bit about that, because my understanding is, you know, there is, um, there is a higher value for it, and then we can choose what we um, wish to charge here. But to... I don't know, to validate that there's nothing wrong with charging for, for our services and for our healing services. Um, people can really not be expected to spend four hours, five hours, six hours a day, um, whereas they otherwise could be earning a living um, doing healing and, and so on and not charging for it because, mm -hmm. you know, there are single mothers and young mothers and everything out there that are doing this work, and they have to be earning a living. They just happen to be talented at that specific service. Um, it doesn't make sense. I did not charge for my healing. But during those years, um, I had a, a very small alimony actually coming in for a few years uh, from a previous marriage, and I was able not to. And because I didn't, it, my, my abilities increased enormously because there has to be some payback cosmically. But it was because I was able to, if I had earned nothing and I would have had to rent a space on top of everything, it would not be prudent for me to do it all for free. Exactly. Thank you. On, on the Belvas Patar specifically, if you're an initiate, you are hooked into a soul group. Let's say you were abused as a child or you're a recovering alcoholic or whatever it is. There's a soul group that is similarly um, in that same boat. Every time you do Belvas Patar, that soul group heals. And then you start to get into the planetary grids or fields. And so it does healing for the planet, for nature, every time you use it, and so on and so on. And then the Grand Mastery, you're healing the higher bodies and the higher cosmic bodies. So this, whatever you're charging, you are going to leave the cosmos in your debt, and it must pay you back. And Belvas Bata means healing of the heart. I know that one. <laughs> <laughs> healing of the heart. Healing of the heart, yes. yes. I'm so grateful for that energy. It's, it's beautiful. And and there are several Belvas Pata websites springing up, and um, just look under B E L V A S P A T 
TA, and also we have a whole Belvas Batar section on my um, website. And then in con under construction this coming week is a brand new website, which is almeenhealing.com, in I which... Well, the, what's nice about that one, Christina, is it will have the full Belvas Patel section on there, but it also shows empirical evidence of before and after 12-minute he healing sessions, the changes oh. that happen to people. It shows um, miraculous photos of, of lights around um, around um, healers as they work on, on patients. Um, you know, and it showed um, the the Grand Master Raj filmed an, an angel, because Belvas Patel works with angels, so we have a beautiful angel picture there. And so, if folks go there within a week or so to almeenhealing.com, there'll be a lot of just good information. Wonderful, wonderful. How about we take just one more little quick break, and then we've just sure. got a couple more questions for you, and we're getting close to the end of our show, but we'll just take a really quick break and right. join this class in just a couple of minutes. Thank you. The Ring of Truth. In this fourth book, chronicling Hal Mean's journey, she tells of the promise and the potential inherent in the resurgence of the feminine principle, increasingly felt in all aspects of current human experience. The operation of new laws governing the cosmos are explained together with the reasons for their creation. We are introduced to Mother, the primal creative energy that pervades every aspect of existence. We learn of her love and her laws and how to incorporate them into every thought and act. We are given samples of her divine language, its meaning, and its power. Mother's great gift to humanity, the healing power of Bel Vaspara is revealed. This new approach to dissolving disease of mind, spirit, and body replaces previously existing methodologies. Application of its techniques removes all barriers of a physically oriented existence and opens a broad pathway to a life of joy and fulfillment. Okay, thank you and welcome back. We are talking with Almin this evening. Almin, I believe it was just after you came back from South Africa, which was what, about a week or two ago? Yes, less than two weeks. Right. And I, oh, now I've actually went out of my mind, I'm not sure which video it was on, but I did watch it. And you spoke about, you stated that there were 16 new cities of light that have been created in the etheric realm. Now, when I knew you were going to say Toronto, and you did, because I, I felt that. And you also mentioned, I believe it was uh, Dublin, which yes. I feel so drawn to go to, and Jerusalem. Is, would you be able to tell us um, the other ones? And maybe, uh, this might sound sort of silly, but, you know, when would we, we sort of be moving in or merging with the etheric uh, cities of light? My sister, I wish that I knew that. Um, we were actually behind schedule. And two days ago, we were bumped forward in time. And how that was done is that light workers everywhere have been feeling a huge amount of pressure, like real busyness and things pressing uh -huh. on them that had to be done. And, you know, like life was just out of control, busy. And finally, I said to the mother, what is happening? We can't go on like this, you know. I mean, the pressure is horrific. And she said, she said what that is for is that you were solving um, nine months' worth of issues. And the nine months ahead, because the issues are solved, it's like those slices of the bread were just removed, and we went straight from slice number, say, three to slice number 12. Um, so we actually skipped forward in time without there really being time. It's just that those in-between minutes were removed. And when I said, but why? She said, because we were behind schedule with the manifestation of the cities in the flesh. And, um, you know, when that is, I really cannot tell you. I would estimate that it's within a few years. Within a few years. Yes. There's one, one in Oregon. Um, let me just think. I can... 
I can possibly grab my manuscript off the shelf somewhere here and, and page to the last bit if you want to. But it, sure. I, shall I do that for us? Okay, I can yes, talk and like do it. it. Sure. I can you. talk and do it all at the same time. Uh, let me see. Um, can I? You know what I was saying, I mean, the light for me, I'm outside all day driving, so I'm outside. And for me, I just find the light so, so bright. And every once in a while, you know, it's very hot here. It's become tropical Toronto. And, um, you know, I'll see the lights and I'll see flashes of things, and I'm not sure what I'm seeing or that I seeing something else in the sky. But sometimes it's just so bright. And I'm just wondering if that's, you know, sort of the, the city of light that I'm My somehow sister, I believe that it is. You know, I'm so sorry. It's not here. It's in my briefcase upstairs. Okay. So, so okay. Wait, 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 wait. I think I have found it. Um, but you're quite correct. We have actually, if I have found it, we have actually had the privilege of, because there's one here in Oregon, and it doesn't necessarily stay in Oregon. If there's an area in the States where there is more um, love, praise, and gratitude, it will move there. But right now it is here uh, in this area of Oregon where I am. We have actually had gatherings here at my home where the masters are able to touch the walls. Um, they can touch it, they can feel it, and they have seen it. Um, they, it's not so totally, um, you know, so totally uh, solid yet that we can, we can like bump ourselves into it, but it's close. We can feel like something thick we're moving through and we can see this gold light. So I have the holy cities for us. <laughs> Oh, wonderful. Yeah. So um, there's Oregon's holy city. South Africa's is over the Soweto area, but larger than the Soweto area in Johannesburg. And then there's one over Dublin. And then the additional 13 that opened is in Yalta. It's near Yalta in Russia, near Hong Kong in China, and Jerusalem in Israel, and there's one in Kuwait. And then oh. there's one near Melbourne in Australia. There's one near Santiago in Chile. Okay. And there's one in Ecuador, and I'm not sure of its location. I need to find that out from Mother because I didn't, couldn't get it. Um, I couldn't see it. And then there's one in Toronto, one in Ethiopia, one in Ceylon, in Warsaw, Poland, and near wow. Kyoto in Japan, and then there's one in the Inner Earth near Polonsk. Oh, sorry, what was the last one? Uh, the Inner Earth, and the, the uh-huh. city, you know, I know that, that most people don't know the cities in the Inner Earth, but it's the city that it's near is Polonsk, P-A-A-L-I-N-S-K. Oh, interesting. This, Beautiful. Uh, Oh, it's so wonderful because, you know, people say, well, what is the use of of knowing this because we can't see it, we can't access it. The beneficial influence that these cities must be exercising over the areas where they are, it's got to make a huge difference. Of course. And a lot of these places or some of the places you talk about have been difficult areas, you know, such as, you know, Ethiopia yeah. and, and Jerusalem, of, of course, it has to and have Sueto, a And Soweto, my yeah. goodness. I just, mm-hmm. you know, was there and, um, you know, it it was very, I was very saddened to see the genocide that was happening from um, black person to black person based on ethnic cleansing and stuff. There was um, some tent cities of for refugees and so on next to the freeway. It's very sad. This has got yeah. to make a difference. Wow, that's beautiful. Thank you. Well, we have a couple more minutes, and there's something really, I just very quickly wanted to to ask you something. It was a little experience that I had about a week ago when I went out to Anita's place, and she lives outside the city, and I was driving through the country road because I prefer that, to look at the, you know, the greenery. And then within one, I turned my head one second, and the next second I turned back, there was a bird that flew towards my car, which I was kind of upset because I thought it was going to hit the bird. The, the blue, bird was in blue color, but the bird was flying um, reverse with its stomach up, if that makes sense, and flapping its wings. But, and, and it was going forward, and then it disappeared. And 
I, I looked all over in the road. I couldn't see the bird, and I didn't see it anywhere. But I was more puzzled by the way that the bird flew. And I remember you talked about, uh, I know we don't have a lot of time left, but about the return of some bird tribes. I don't yeah. know if that's related or if that was just a message for me. Oh, my sister, I think it is related. In fact, um, there's a message coming through from Mother. Uh, could, could I okay. speak it? Mother is saying that there has been a bird that is obsolete, that lived eons ago when creation was just made. Mother is saying that that bird, now that the reign of peace is ushered in, can be resurrected. Now, I've been, interestingly enough, because I was aware that there was, two little, there was a little bird that needed to be resurrected when the sense of adventure and the feeling that the cosmos is a safe place came in because one of the masters in my classes picked up one of his, a little fossil of this bird. And I tried to get the mother to resurrect the bird, but she didn't want to till those frequencies were there. And now that the peace frequency is there, Mother is saying that this bird that you saw, um, it's a bird that can fly upside down, but it has to be resurrected. Its song will sing the physical equivalent of the peace um, tones. Oh, my goodness. I was on my way to Anita because we do uh, toning, sound, and light activation workshops in telecom. Oh, <laughs> and how and many languages, so it was, uh, you know, it, it, it startled me for a moment, but now that, thank you very much. I mean, that, you know, that brings tears to my eyes, and um, thank you very much. I'm, I'm glad that I remembered to ask you about that. That's yes, wonderful. Thank you so much. You're very well, welcome. I mean, 